made it. We're on the highway, and... Don't want to do that again. No. What are we doing tonight? We're going to listen to a concert. A yeah. Cajun concert. Cajun concert. I'm excited to see. Pretty cool. We yeah. got invited to a Cajun concert. Mm -hmm. It's at a barn, and yeah. I have no idea what to look for, look to expect. <laughs> look forward to. It. I'm looking forward to it, but I just don't know what to expect. We got a lot of people here. There is a lot of people. Yeah, they promised uh, good music and, and uh, some fun times. So. It's a barn, you know, historical registry. I mean, it's a barn. I said, yes, but it had cultural and social significance. Um, the roads were bad. There were two reasons people got together during the week. They went to church on Sunday, and they came to the sale barn on Tuesday. And so they were able to visit with each other and find out the gossip. It's also the only barn that is built on a waterway. So we are on the Vermilion Bayou. And the Lower Vermilion Parish were able to barge their cattle and their horses and animals for sale um, and then come up via the water. And probably about 1990, we decided that we wanted to do something. Johnny was making saddles and doing leather work in the reception area. And we were having jammed up good times in here <laughs> with our fellow musicians. We had two sheets of plywood and two two-by-fours. And the guys would come up here and we'd barbecue outside and we were having a grand old time. And so we said, what should we do with it? And our musician friend said, you know, they have really good acoustics here. You should turn it into a concert hall. And, and that was the side. We said, okay, great. That's what we'll do. We're going to play some traditional Cajun music just like, you know, everybody grew up learning it with guitar, accordion, fiddle on the back porch after crawfish balls. Gumbos, things like that. I think it's the most purest form of Cajun music myself, you know. And we, we do it acoustically in here because it's such a live room since it's an old wooden building. It was made, you know, so the auctioneer could speak out, you know. Yeah. Documenting our travels with technology sometimes comes with challenges, and we discovered one of those challenges while visiting a wonderful little Cajun cafe. It was suggested that we visit Swear's Grocery and Cafe just outside of Abbeville, and we were excited to share our experience since it had been reviewed by the New York Times and other publications. We had a wonderful time, but when we reviewed the footage, we discovered the audio didn't record during our visit, but the experience was so much fun we just had to share. Miss Joan is one of the owners of the cafe. She and her sister inherited it after the passing of their parents. She helped us decide what to order off the menu since neither one of us had experienced Cajun cooking. We ordered fried alligator as an appetizer and had the seafood platter with gumbo. It was outstanding. Swears is just a little grocery and cafe out in the country but a must stop if you're ever in the area. I don't know, we don't know how deep that sucker is. <laughs> 
the deepest puddles I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. That was interesting. That was that was very nerve-wracking. I mean it was you know when they have this sign that says turn around, don't drown. We got stuck in the middle of that. We thought oh, we should have done that to <laughs> turn around, but we made it. We're on the highway and Want to do that again? No. No, that was that was pretty scary. So we are at Rip Van Winkle's Gardens. Mm -hmm. And there's a little cafe here. And we decided to have lunch at the cafe. Mm -hmm. And wow, what a cool place. It's very cool. We ordered um, a cup of chicken gumbo, which was amazing. And then we ordered, uh, what's the sandwich called? It's an Italian muffalata. 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 And. Uh, I mean, oh my goodness, look at this. This is a hole. Yeah. We were going to split the hole and it turned out to be pizza size. So, <laughs> but it's really, really good. It's really good. And then we've got this really cool view outside. So, something else to do if you're in the in the area, it's just a um, cool little place, nice little cafe, very reasonably priced. Oh yeah, it's open until two. Two in the afternoon. In the afternoon. Okay. So. Anyway, it's it's good stuff, and and the atmosphere is really kind of neat too. So. the gardens today but it's too wet it's too wet so um, we're gonna finish our lunch and then I think we're gonna go watch a movie and catch in a bit well we're here at the Tabasco factory and we're gonna take a tour today got our entry pass we made it <laughs> we weren't sure if we were going to with the roads but Jim got found another way to go around so yay so here we are, the Tabasco Factory Visitor Center. I smell Tabasco. Do you? <laughs> yeah. You sure it's not the Maybe sandwich we lunch. had from lunch? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It could be. This is really nice in here. It's where craftsmen work with soil, seeds, peppers, and thyme. It's where over a century of tradition meets with an eye to the future. Where laurels are celebrated, but never rested upon. It's a place called Avery Island, Louisiana. And it's the only place where Tabasco original red sauce is made. Since the 1860s, the world has changed a lot. But one thing that hasn't changed is the way we make our one-of-a-kind sauce. The hand-picked peppers are mashed mixed with a small amount of salt, then placed in white oak barrels. The barrels are then sealed, and the pepper mash is aged for up to three years. The 
aging gives the sauce its character by allowing the flavors to evolve. After aging, the mash is then ready to be stirred with vinegar and bottled. And while original red is enjoyed on tables around the world, it always starts right here on Avery Island. There are easier ways, but for McElhenney Company, this is the only way. So what do you got there, Kelly? A big lump of salt. <laughs> and no, I'm not going to lick it. You're not going to taste it? I kind of want to. But I don't know how many other people have licked that, so... <laughs> Maybe I'll... Ooh. Salty. That's a big chunk of salt. That is huge. Any preppers out there, great to have this chunk down in your basement. <laughs> we just sand it off and... So our next stop is... First Rock Salt Mine. It's a salt dome. And they have a few of these on the island. This is the Tabasco bottling line. This is pretty cool. That's a lot of Tabasco sauce. That is a lot of Tabasco sauce. are produced today so far. That's just today? Is, yep, bottle produced today. That's a lot of hot sauce. That is a lot of hot sauce. Well, this morning started out with torrential rains and it flooded. We had flash flooding and we didn't think we were going to be able to do the things that we wanted to do today, but we did. We got to go to Rip Van Winkle Gardens. We didn't get to tour the gardens, but we got to go to the cafe that we were told to go to. And highly recommend it. The people in there are just so sweet. And the food is amazing. And just the surroundings of the place is just beautiful. And then, after being there for a couple of hours, we decided to try and go to um, the Tabasco Sauce Factory and we took a tour of the, the facility and it was pretty awesome, don't you think? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a fun day. It was kind of an adventure. Um, we learned some history today. We learned that the Tabasco factory is actually uh, in a town called Avery Island and it's not really an island. No. The cafe, the lunch that we had today was on Johnson Island. Jefferson. Je oh, you're right, Jefferson Island. It was called Jefferson Cafe. And it's not an island either. No. So apparently, years and years and years ago, they this whole area has got um, salt underneath it. And in five distinct places, around the southern Louisiana area, the ground rose where the salt was under it. It, it actually rose, I think it set up to 160 feet mm -hmm. in elevation over sea level. And the reason they call them islands is because from an aerial view, they are round up. Mounds. Mounds. Salt and, mounds. Yeah, and uh, very distinct along the landscape and so they called them islands and so hence the name Avery Island and Jefferson Island and there's three others and I don't remember what the names were but that was kind of neat yeah yeah I thought that was I, I just thought it was gonna be an island but... yeah <clears throat> the people here have been absolutely phenomenal so awesome um, things to do here so we stayed in Abbeville Louisiana which is south of Lafayette and I'll tell you what, we'll do a review on Avery Island, or I'm sorry, Abbeville, uh, Abbeville RV yeah. Park. But it, it, some of the nicest people we've ever oh. met. Very, very caring and, 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 and just wanted to have a good time and suggesting places to go see. 
Uh, we stayed here for three nights and it was rush, rush, rush. Really, yeah. there's a lot to do here. In this small town. Yeah, in this area. Yeah. Uh, we went up to Lafayette to, for the Swamp Tour. We had a Cajun music festival last night, concert. Mm -hmm. uh, today we went to the Tabasco factory and we went to Johnson Island and, and Jefferson, Jefferson Island, Island <laughs> and the Jefferson Cafe and had lunch. And it's already going on 3.30 and uh, we hey. were headed back to the RV to pack up and get ready to hit the road again tomorrow. Right. So. We were invited tonight to go yeah. somewhere. To, a, to another, another music. Con another concert. Yeah. So we will do a review on the Abbeville RV Park. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it's it's five thumbs up. Yes, it's it's awesome. So we'll You've do a review on that. If you know, hopefully down. we'll get enough video. Yeah. Um, so the area is, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, the area is a you must come and see this. This yes. is a destination. Um, this is pretty cool. The the people, the locals are phenomenal. This, as I was told by the locals, this is the heart of Cajun country. Yes. Uh, you get northeast, south, or west of here just a little bit and not so much, they say. You know, you go to South Texas and you feel like you're in Mexico because the Mexican culture is so strong. And then you come to Louisiana. And southern it's Louisiana. Southern Louisiana. And you feel like you're in France because everybody speaks French. <laughs> And Cajun French. Cajun French. Oh my gosh, they're just the neatest people. You guys have got to come here. This is is by, by and large a place, a destination. Uh, it's it's a yes. little bit south of I-10, south of Lafayette. Not too bad of a drive, uh, but the people are amazing and, mm -hmm. and everything is great. So, we're hitting the road tomorrow. We've had a great time. Glad you came along. Hope you enjoyed this. And uh, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. And hit that bell next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified every time that we put out a new video. And subscribing is free. Yeah. So do it. It doesn't cost you a thing. But no. it does help us. It does help us. Uh, we've kind of got a competition going with some other YouTube channels, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hit that subscribe button, it, it, it really helps us out. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. And we hope you have a good week. And now it's time to... Go and explore. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.